to be a good day, Ashley. It's going to be a good day. Every day above ground is, is good. That's a great perspective for someone as youthful as you, Ashley. I'm glad that you have that type of daily recognition and, and value in your days. That's a, that's good. To, that's a good thing to hear from, from yeah. someone as youthful as you. <laughs> yeah. Even on, on my crankiest days, hey, I got it better than most. Yeah. I, when, when I hear an old guy saying that, then it's like, it, it make it like I get it, and it actually is kind of sad. He's like, any day I'm a, any day I'm above ground, I'm having. A, I'm like, look, good for him to like recognize the the power of his day, you know. But for someone as young as you, that's like, that's really uh, it's really great that you recognize that on a daily. Wise beyond my years. Yeah, man. that's cool. Are we are we just gonna flow into podcasts like this? Yeah, I think we're just gonna flow into it. It's a good well, start. Yeah, Malena approves. All right, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Much better than previous intros for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so... You know which one I'm you know referring what? to. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't have to say it. Yeah, so... So, uh, <laughs> with this... Yeah, I know we're so, so off guard now because I'm not off, my, not off my, normal, my normal path, but I'm liking it, and I'm liking it because of our podcast today, which is Realistic Expectations. Yes. And um, <clears throat> being realistic about your days, like you just talked about. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. Thanks for being so... Uh, deep on the start oh, on the yes, intro and thank you for existing i appreciate it you know i do too i would be kind of bored if you didn't exist like I, what would i be doing my life is like ex, ex, exponentially better be, since i've met you we've had a lot of fun we've oh, had nice. um, a lot of really cool memories a lot of laughs and so thank you ashley you've a lot been of my laughs a lot of gains a lot of gains very very rare fights very rare no, for, very, you, very. you have a the the long you have the streak for me of someone I've been close to for this many years with as little as fights as we have. Oh, I, mean, like, I don't even think it was fights. It was more like I got cranky and you got sassy. That's yeah. basically. That's the extent of it. Like you get, I call it sassy out of mode. You know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about where you get kind of stern, like, you know, like yeah. the serious face comes on and, you know, I get cranky sometimes when I don't sleep. So, you know, when I get cranky, you get sassy, you know, it's bound to happen. it is, it is what it is. <laughs> I always tell Kimber whenever we have a fight, I'm like, it's, I'm like, I'm so glad we got our last fight out of the way. <laughs> she's, always, she's always like, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's a good scene. <laughs> So uh, th that's not a realistic expectation, is no, it? No, not realistic at all. <laughs> it's not. So we're going into realistic expectations today. And um, who better than Ashley to have a realistic expectation? So honestly, sometimes Ashley's expectations are too realistic. Yes, I, will I say agree. That. I think here's the thing. You're an optimist. You're yeah. a dreamer. I'm like sometimes too realistic to a fault to where I'm like, well, if we're looking at stats and numbers, uh, I'm I'm not going to win. <laughs> yeah. Whereas you're like, no, you can do it. If we, you know, we got this, we can do this, yeah. you know? So sometimes it's good to have someone to kind of like, you know, keep things a little hopeful. Not that I'm, you know, not hopeful. I'm just too realistic to where I'm like, well, if we're going by numbers. Yeah. If we're going by the stats, the odds are against me. There's a, there's a saying Ashley, I want you to remember it. I think I've said it before, but I want you to remember it. There was a man who said he can, and there was a man who said he can't, and they were both right. Mm -hmm. Yes. But would you say the man <laughs> that can't would be more of the pessimist, which we're both of us aren't pessimists. Like, you I wouldn't know, say we're pessimists. You're so a realist. That's the I'm thing. a realist. So yeah. what would that guy said? The guy might say, He's the maybe guy. Like, well, you know, well, I'm not going to say I can do it, but I'm not going to say I can't. That's true. The guy you know, is, is he's one who said I can like, and one who said maybe, and they were both yeah. right. So the maybe guy. Because that does change. I'm the maybe one. That does change the variable quite a bit. Yes. Because we're not, you know, we're not <laughs> pessimists. I no. wouldn't say I'm, I'm over here like, there's no way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm not, I'm not that negative. I'm not a negative no, but you're, Nancy. You're a, you're a statistician. I would say, okay. it's based on stats. You know, and, I, like, and I hate numbers. That's a funny yeah, thing. Yeah, you do numbers. it very much based on, well, if I be this girl and this girl be me and whatever, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's and that's how they do it. If you look at like, um, like prize fighting and stuff too, they'll, they'll do matches based on that. Oh, well, he beat both those guys and that guy beat both these guys. So what would happen if they both, you know, that makes sense. So you kind of go off kind of like that. Well, you know, so that makes, that makes sense. Now you're, I think you're a very realistic and I think that it's important to be realistic sometimes mm -hmm. in bikini. It's a, it's a really weird sport where 
it can go so many ways and so many different days. It's almost, it's, that's the, it's it's, so unpredictable. Yeah. If it was affecting your confidence, then I would say you need to be more optimistic. But I think that you're, you always look the same, whether you think you're going to win the show or if you're not as, you you always come off stage. It's just rather if, whether if you have a good posing routine or not, whether Mm -hmm. you're fluid or not, is really the dictator of if, how confident you look is really just based on how you do your routine. But it's not a confidence thing. It's just, did you do your routine good yeah. or not really that day or not? So it's a little different for you. I guess that goes with the experience, right? Mm-hmm, definitely. So, yeah, I think like, you know, in this sport, just like you said, it's very unpredictable, especially with bikini. Like bikini is not a division you want to place bets on. You know what I mean? You want to kind of uh, keep an open mind. And just, I always say, you know, I go into every single show without, any placing expectations. I'm definitely looking for improvements in things I did good and things I did bad, but I think it's silly to go in expecting to win because, you know, unlike many other sports, you can't play defense, you know, and also it's not like other sports, like let's say track where you can't play defense, but you know, like, okay, my, my PR is two seconds faster than this girl. Then it's like, well, you know, you got a pretty good chance, um, unless something you get injured or something like that. So it is tricky because it's definitely, I think bikini is the division where you have to be really mentally strong when it comes to placings and feedback especially too because as you know judges feedback can sometimes get to your head a little bit too um, especially if you're hearing different things from different people so I think like a lot comes into play because it's not as cut and dry as let's say bodybuilding where it's like the biggest leanest most symmetrical guy wins it's not like that with bikini there's so much that goes into bikini judging um, like symmetry uh, muscularity beauty flow even skin complexion believe it or not so a lot of things go into play with bikini and the thing is you can't really measure some of these things it's more of like an opinion and it's the most subjective out of every division like how muscular is too muscular how lean is too lean what's too soft and does the judge like prefer more a tall long lengthy girl like like kimber or a short shorter girl that's more bubbly you know so there's many different physiques that thrive in bikini so it is difficult for the judges to kind of determine who would be the winner that day because it really can go so many different ways and i think like if everyone was just like, for example, at the Olympia, if everyone was just a number and you didn't know anything about the competitors, if you didn't know their prior like competition history, you didn't know their name, everyone was just a, a new competitor on stage. I think it'd be really kind of hard to predict, I think, sometimes who would get uh, what placing yeah. in that like top five or top 10, right? Whereas like, well, if you know a little bit about the sport and you know, okay, this girl's been successful, this girl won this big show or whatever, you might have a better idea. But if everyone was a number, would you be able to predict, you know? It'd be tricky. I wonder, I wonder how it would change judging. I wonder how that would change judging, right? If it was just like, if there was like a faceless way of doing it, right? Well, <laughs> just body alone, it would still, it would be face. Is judged in yeah, the bikini the face too. Is judged in <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be interesting. You're right. If we just didn't know anything about them, it would be yeah. Man, that'd be hard. Yeah, the judges. I do. I do. You know, because I do these reviews, and I never mean to be hard on a judge when I do them, because it is when you're doing it live, it's hard. And that's the thing too is there are times where I'm at a show, and my opinion changes because I'm at a show versus versus like in a picture right. or something. Too. Yeah, those and pictures it, can be deceiving, especially with the lighting angle. Even like on iPhone photos, you're seeing a weird like blurry photo you know yeah. yeah there's been times where i'm at shows where the girl looks significantly leaner at the show than she does in her pictures and then i'll get feedback like oh don't you think she's a little too lean and i'm look at the pictures and i'm like no and then i've had it the opposite too where they'll look a little leaner in the pictures than they did at the show and i'm like oh that's crazy too like the pictures might have been edited or whatever so um yeah it's it's difficult in real time to be like as a judge it's in real time and you have basically 30 perfect bodies on a stage mm-hmm. And the higher it gets, the harder it gets exponentially oh, yeah. harder. It's so, would you get like an Olympia level show? And I'm like, it, everyone how, is like, how are you even? Yeah. Bodybuilding's easy at, even at the bodybuilding, even at the level of bodybuilding, when you get to the very top, it's pretty, it's pretty clear. Usually like the top three guys, you could usually separate those guys. And maybe there's a strong argument between like one, two, three, but it's even then it's like pretty obvious. But when you get to these other divisions, like a men's physique or bikini at that top, top level, you're like, what do you even do here? You know? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yep. And it's like, like I said, there is no like strict guidelines necessarily that would determine somebody because it's, it's very opinion based and 
you know, they follow the criteria as best they can. But at the yeah. same time, obviously opinion goes into play too. Whereas like preference and, you know, some judges like a more muscular, some like them smaller, you know? So yeah, that's a for sure thing. That is absolutely for sure. And you mm-hmm. can, it's a, uh, it's, it's fun to learn it. The one thing I do love about doing the reviews so much is I learn, it makes me learn more about all the athletes first, which is really cool. So it keeps me like super in the know of who's who, uh, which is hard to do. You know, it's really hard to do with how many shows there are and how many girls are, but also with how the judges like someone too. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when I have an athlete, I'm like, oh, I know exactly who to put that person with. Like I'm going to mm-hmm. chase these judges that like this look a little more. If I have someone who has more muscle, oh, okay, I'm going to chase these judges who like a little bit more muscle or whatever, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a unique thing on how, the sport is played. Right. So, yeah. And it's just how natural, natural. So anyway, going into, um, being realistic, you have some good questions here. The producer, Ashley here, (laughs) um, what's a realist. So I think that we could go into, you know, what realistic time time frame is for prep. Mm -hmm. Um, everyone has a different starting point. Exactly. Like, you know, I think a lot of times since social media is so prevalent in our industry, obviously in every industry, but for us, I think most of us are on Instagram and they see like, their favorite competitor did like a 12 week prep and then they're good to go. And, you know, and it is something to, to realize is something that we all always kind of point out is we're, we're starting from different points, right? For example, I stay closer to like a stage lean than most would. So my preps are a lot shorter. I don't even do cardio till like a month out from show. And, you know, even that I'm at a pro level, but let's talk about like somebody that's like just getting into the sport Yeah, and maybe they're just, um, a very in shape soccer mom. They do yoga three times a week and do spin and, you know, they might lift weights here and there. Um, they're rather in shape, but maybe not in shape for a bikini cause it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's a, that's a good thing. Cause a lot of people start, I think exactly there, you mm-hmm. know, um, your normal fit person. Yeah. They're just regular fit. You know, they, yeah. they run, they might exercise a little bit with weights, um, time frame to stage for someone like that. So I always, when I, when I get pictures sent into me, cause I get pictures sent into me a few times a day, actually on the, on the website for like inquiries about coaching, I'll give them a estimated timeline. And so it's always based on Two things. One, how much fat, how long it's going to take to lose the fat for them to get stage ready, which is usually pretty fast. Usually if someone's fit, it's like, you know, four months, six months, if they really need to lose, you know, 30 ish pounds or something. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, if it's a full transformation, it could be a year, but that's like a bigger transformation. Most people are going to fit in that six month or less range for body fat, but the muscle part, that's the, that's the hard part now. That takes a while. Yeah. It used to be, you know, a year we could get pretty much everyone on stage, body fat and muscle. But now it's, you know, it's like a two year process to get. Assuming they're starting kind of just from a fit regular. Yes. Person. Yes. Now everyone's going to be obviously a lot different. That's a, that's a regular, right. very intro person. Um, you know, I would say two years is a realistic time frame to be competitive at an NPC level, round full glutes, round hamstrings, good shoulders, a little bit of shoulder capping. Um, conditioning won't be an issue at that time frame. Of course, two mm-hmm. years. Um, yeah. Th- that'd be a good time. And then for that person to go pro, probably about a three to five year, just depending on their genetics, um, how they're responding to exercise, the intensity of their lifts, that type of thing, mm-hmm. adherence to plan, how good they're being in the off season, you know, and then you could have some, some one-offs that just get there in 18 months, you know, the, to, to pro level. It, it happens all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. So I have it, you know, usually like once a year to once every two years, I have some, someone who just started a year ago and got a, Got their pro card. I it's, think that's really important to po- point out because I think a lot of people think it's a lot easier to do that than what it is. You have you work with many people. You get like one a year, maybe. Yeah, that's it's pretty. Odds are against you. See, so look at me being all realistic. Yeah, odds are against you. <laughs> and I think like a lot of people get the idea that like they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to start training for my first bikini competition this year, and by the end of the year, I'm going to go pro. Doesn't yeah. usually work like that. Yeah. And be careful because even I'll post, I'll post it, but I don't post it as a, this is a normal thing, but it'll right. come off like that. I'll be like, I'll, you know, I'll post the client, you know, Ashley pro card started lifting 14 months ago. Right. And then people will take it as, oh, Ashley did it in 14 months. I can too. And I'm like, mm-hmm. no, no, you can't. <laughs> like right. it's so super rare, you know, but you know, you don't put that in the post, but I don't mean it to put it in to be deceiving. I'm just right. like, she did that. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's no, what it, no, I think- so it's, it's a, uh, it's be careful. Cause a lot of, and even, and, you know, coaches aren't being deceptive when they post this cause they're proud of it. It's cool. I'm proud of it. If I did get someone in, in 14 months, but it's not the norm. And you'll see that, um, you'll see, let's say for example, 
let's say, let's say Ashley wins a show in the next, whatever this year, she wins a show and she does a four week prep. I'm like, Oh, only a four week prep. Ashley wasn't even doing cardio before. Like I can make it sound so right. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when they, when in reality it's like, it just kind of maintain closer. So yeah, it is a four week prep. Yeah, but exactly. But technically, been, but not really. Yeah. But technically even prepping really kind of how everyone else would consider it prep the whole time. Right. So right. it's, it's, so it's, you know, be careful with that stuff because you have to set your expectations up realistically. Cause if you see these things, then it becomes, um, yeah. if that becomes your expectation, then you get disappointed quite a bit. And then what your coach is doing to you becomes terrible. Right. I got, I got that email the other day. This girl was like, yeah, it's so hard. My coach is killing me. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, what is it? What is killing you? You know, she's like, well, I'm at 1400 calories and I'm six weeks out from a show and I only need to lose like around 10 pounds. And I'm like, well, how much car are you doing? She's yeah. Uh, she's like, I'm like, how much car are you doing? She's like, uh, she's like, I'm doing an hour a day. I'm like, okay, hour a day cardio, six weeks out. It's a little high. It's, it's not out of this park high, but you got to lose 10 pounds in six weeks, you know, and your 14 or calories is actually pretty good considering you need to lose 10 pounds. I was like, yeah, I, I might have you a little lower than that. Actually, like if we had to lose 10 pounds, it's one and a half a week going into it. And if you're only 120 pounds on stage, that's more than 1% of your weight, but your expectations weren't realistic is what the problem was. Right. That's, that's what the issue was. You saw my post that Ashley got in shape and she was eating 1800 calories a couple of weeks ago. And now, you know what I mean? That's, that's the problem, you know, or I'll have the girl who's like, yeah, I haven't gotten my pro card. I've been trying for three years and you know, your girl got it in 14 months that you posted. And why am I not doing that? And I'm like, well, you're not the same. You're not, your genetics aren't the same, you know? Right. So, and even athletic background could have been different, right? Yeah, exactly. Like if I'm sure like getting athletes from like a CrossFit or powerlifting, that's like, okay, we got some muscle to work with. Like, of course we need some refining, but at least there's a starting point that's not like zero. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. So I think, yeah, there's so many factors that go into it. Just like you said, genetics, adherence to plan, previous uh, experience with um, sports or weightlifting. So it's so hard to determine. Um, but yeah, you know, I would even say this as well, something to keep in mind as like the national shows are happening, they're really starting to pick up now is like, even if you look pro ready, even if you look like you could get a pro card, just realize there's going to be many, many, many girls at the national stage. Also, that could be a pro, right? Could be a pro any day, could pr turn pro at that show. So I always say, you know, don't assume even if you look pro ready that you're going to get it the first shot. Sometimes you need to be at the right place at the right time from the right judges against the right competitors. You're ready. You just kind of have to wait for your turn. Um, but I, I again, a lot of people get that impression like, oh, yeah, I look great. I'm going to win my pro card here. Usually it takes girls, you know, like five national shows to get a pro card and not yeah. just not just their first one. Does it happen? Yeah, of course. Some girls get their pro card on the first national show. It happens, but it's not the norm. You know, I think most people you would talk to, they didn't get it on their first shot. Most yeah. of them don't. Um, but there was a quote. Let's see if I can remember. Winners. Okay, hold on. I got to look it up. I'm going to look it up. Oh, it's good. a good one. Yeah. I started off good winners. Winners, winners. <laughs> oh, winners. Um, so is, is it, is it winning a winner is just someone who never accepted a loss? Is it something like that? Something along those lines. <laughs> um, I love quotes. I'm like a yes. quote, I'm like a quote library. I love those. Yes. I was listening to, actually was listening to Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson's t uh, quotes today this morning when I was waking up. Oh really? Yeah. He said, um, he said, talked about money and happiness. And then it was with a thing with Patrick, but David, who's an awesome, uh, awesome podcast. And he said, um, cause he talked about being humble and how he had to get gain humbleness by losing all his money once. And he's like, that's how I gained it. And he said, well, something about happiness. And he said, well, if you think money's going to make you happy, someone who says money's going to make you happy is someone who's never had any money, you know, any, uh, any yeah. Someone okay. who thinks money's going to make them happy is obviously someone who's never had a lot of money is what he said. And I was like, ah, which, you know, yeah, I, he, money. And I'll say he's right. Money changes nothing in terms of your happiness. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Cause I've, I've had both, you know, I've been up and down so many times it's zero to happiness, you know, buying things is cool for a while. When you first go from Porta having money, the first like year of buying things is like cool. Cause you can do it. And then after that, it's like very normalized. And then I've been broke and then money again and then broke and then money again, zero difference in happiness. What brings your happiness is having like a passion in life. Mm -hmm. 
which is what this is for me, you know, which this is for you too, competing and coaching and being part of the fitness. Like that's my riches, you know, yeah. being around you guys, that's my riches. So Aww. yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say that it, to a point, like to have enough money to feel secure yeah. is good. And after that point is like, okay. Yeah. You know? So it is nice to not have to stress about like, oh, can I make this payment or that? So, but you know, Hey, we did it. Hey, yeah. we, hey mom, we're doing good. <laughs> we did we're it. doing good in life. Don't worry. <laughs> so I found the quote and I rarely write down these things because, you know. Oh, you wrote this down. Well, I typed it in my notes. So I guess, you know, the 2023 version That's of writing That's a note. Something. That's a write it down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something along those lines. It says, it's not that winners never lose. It's that the winners never quit. So if you lose, step back, figure it out, find a solution, move forward. Don't quit. It's not over. It's just the beginning. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. So, and that's the truth of it. You're not going to, there's never going to be, your path to success will never be linear. Yes. Yes. It will not, it will not be linear. And I think people need to know that you're going to go through some ups and downs, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've had devastating losses or devastating changes with even just the team alone. Um, and you just, at that moment, you feel like everything's done and it's crumbling or whatever. And it's like, nope, you just wake up the next day, take the loss that day, take it, accept it, get better from it, come back the next day like it didn't happen and learn from it though, you know? Mm -hmm. And then just act like the next day is just a brand new day and, and, it, and it's just going to be how it is. You're going to go to nationals. And I've done it as a coach too with girls where I'll go into a national show and I'll be like, there's no one's going to touch this girl. Like how, how would you beat her, you know? I've had a few national shows like that. I've had a few national shows. I'm going to win. Finally, Miss whatever, USA, Universe, whatever today. All right? I'm going to get it, whatever it is. And then the girl doesn't even win her pro card. And I'm like, how did that even happen? Like, you know what I mean? And it's like you get, you, and, it's, and it sucks for the girl too because, you know, I'll never hype her up, but I'll think it, you know, because I, I know the reality of it. I'll never be like, you're going to win the whole thing. But, um, you know, and you get your butt kicked and you're like, man, how does that even, how does that even happen, you know? And it's funny because I'm, I'm, close friends with a lot of coaches, you know, like one in particular, and he'll have a day and he'll be like, did you get any pro cards this day? And I'm like, yeah, I got, I got what I got too. And he's like, we have this competition going, we like make bets and stuff behind the scenes. And, um, he's like, dude, I got my ass kicked today. Am I just not seeing right? Like, am I not seeing? I'm like, no, dude, you just it wasn't your day. Like your girls look good. We'll ask each other. Am I off? Like, am I just not seeing something bad right now am I because you'll go through like flows you'll right. go through flows of being just on point I've been good for about a year but I had it like two months where I was bringing girls in like a little leaner than they should and he'll have months like that too where it's like you're just not seeing straight and you need your buddy to be like hey dude your girls are a little lean you know and um you're like okay let me recalibrate right and so and everyone just goes through any sport slumps or whatever too right and, and it's like a, it's a funny thing because these are like like some of the world, like world level guys, you know, and they're still, they're even they're off. They're even they're off and on when they're bringing, what they're bringing to the table. Sometimes they're going to be hot and sometimes you're not. Um, and same thing with you as a competitor. Sometimes you'll feel like your best and it's, it's your worst, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's happened before where we thought like, oh, this is the best look. And it was <laughs> not to the judges. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it happens. It happens. But still you, one of your best looks is one you didn't win. It's still like one of my favorite looks. I'm like, right. I wasn't even upset at that one because I saw my, my stage photos and I'm like, shoot, look at this. I made some improvements. So, you know, you just got to you gotta have fun with it. But I always see this too. It's like, you know, if you're ever like like having negative thoughts or, or feeling down on yourself because you didn't do as well as you thought or didn't win, you got to listen. Every single Olympia champion has lost. Everyone has. Some at smaller shows. Some's gotten 16th right? And it's, again, going back to the quote, you know why they're successful? It's because they didn't quit after that. Yeah. They just kept going. You take those um, those learning lessons and they're tough, right? You messed up something, your physique didn't look right, whatever the case may be. You got to learn from that. And just think of it as like, you know what? Every single show comes with a learning lesson. So although you didn't win the show, you won some learning lessons, right? So you just got to take those um, little tough learning lessons and apply them for next time and hopefully make less and less. But let me assure you, you'll still make mistakes. I still make them. <laughs> no one's perfect. Yeah. Um, we're always learning and the sport's always like, you know, getting tougher and tougher. So there's always things to learn regardless, even if I win or I lose, I still learn something because I never 
imperfect. You know, it's, it's important to reach out to judges, your coach, people that know the sport and ask for feedback, even if you don't agree with it. Um, I think, um, having a little pile of, of opinions and feedback from the show is, is very helpful. So you know what to work on for the next time. And you can't be too stubborn about it. You can't be like, should have won the show. Ugh. Oh my gosh, like, you know, you got to, it's tough. I know it's tough, but you got to like soak it in and just make those improvements. You yeah, know? you either win or you learn. You either win or you learn. Exactly, yes, yeah. yes, that's it's correct. A, losing is a good point of uh, reference for, for improving. Uh, I'm sorry, l- losing is a good, did I say losing? Losing is a good point of reference for learning. It's hard to learn from winning. Right. You know, if you're constantly winning and you're always winning, it's it's really difficult to learn from that point. And that's where you run into issues with initial, like the initial preps on bikini athletes, because you'll run in some, not all, not all, I don't want to stereotype the typical bikini girl, but a lot of bikini girls have always had success in their life. And this is the first like challenge that they'll run into where they're going to run into that, like losing, you know, you'll have uh, a girl who maybe didn't play any sports, but she was a cheerleader, you know, in high school and she was the popular girl in high school and she's really pretty and has always been told yes. And, you know, she lives a different, a different kind of reality you know of of that because of of those things and then she gets into her first sport which is really just fitness modeling right and she's like i've always been good as a fitness model i've always taken pictures i've always done this i've always been like you know i'm gonna do good at this and then the first time she runs it and she's like like sorry you didn't you didn't meddle today at all like you didn't like you just it's the it's hard for them to take that in the first time because the expectations weren't right yeah right because hey now you're playing a sport this is different you know this is not a team thing this is a you thing and, and it's, it's a, you're a, the objective reality of where you're at, you know, exactly. versus everyone else. So it's a tough thing. And you got to set those expectations up, right? Especially now the bikini physique is a lot more advanced than it used to be. And so, you know, it's going to take you some, some real time to get to that level of that look that you want. You know, if you see these girls who, you know, I get pictures sent to me all the time. Sometimes it's your picture and the, and the girls will be like, you know how I want to look like this. And I'm like, I want to look like that. <laughs> like, I wanna, believe me, I want glutes like that too. But uh, it's going to take you some time. You know, it's not going to be a six month thing. And they'll be like, yeah, you think if I did a 16 week prep, I can look kind of like, like, no, not at all. Yeah, not just that too. <laughs> yeah. is I think like a lot of people kind of beat around the bush when sometimes it's genetics. You can only do so much with your genetics. Now that doesn't mean you can't be a successful competitor. It just might mean there's something literally on your body that we can't change, you know, or really do much with, you know what I mean? So like, for example, I always use the calf analogy. Calves, you can't really move them up or down. If you have little small, uh, like golf ball calves that are up high, it's not like you can lengthen them and like, oh, if I train them long enough, I can just, you know, they'll, they'll go further down my leg. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, sometimes genetics, of course, will overpower any hard work, but that doesn't mean that you can't be the best you. You know, not every physique will look, well, how do I say it? In bikini, there's many diverse physiques. I'm sure there's one competitor that kind of looks like you or has the same structure, but I mean, it's it. there's things you can't change at yeah. the end of the day, but that doesn't mean that there's no hope. It just means maybe you will never have glutes like this person or a waistline like that girl or, you know what I mean? Just due to your genetics and, and the positioning of your muscles and the muscle insertion itself, you know? Yeah. I remember when I was younger, um, there was bodybuilders I talked to and I was like, you know, Ronnie Coleman was the guy, you know, when he was, he was winning Dorian Yates and Ronnie Coleman, like was like my, when I was growing up in bodybuilding, whereas the Mr. Olympia champions. And I was like, I'll do whatever it takes to be as big as Ronnie Coleman. I'll be do, do whatever it takes to like, look like that. And this guy was like, you, you could probably get as big as him like that. Anyone could probably get as big as that person if they put that much time, effort into and everything that they do into it. But it doesn't mean you're going to look like him when you have that much muscle. Like, it doesn't mean you're going to look that good. I mean, you're of Mexican descent, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think you would look like yeah, that. Probably not. I mean, with the protein. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, the thing is, is like, that's what people don't understand that, right? There's a limitation. Even if you had the same amount of muscle as a, uh, as an Ashley, as a whoever, it doesn't mean you'll be laid out the same way. Like mm-hmm. your muscles will look the same, you know? So right. there's those limitations that we all need to <laughs> take into account on those, on those things. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's good to have those like realistic. Like, for me, that one, I never really even thought about that when I was that age, I was just like, no, I'll, I'll look, I just never really, you never really think about it. Cause you're like, you know, 16, 18, whatever. Right. You're just like, oh, I'm trying to get as big as Ronnie Coleman. Like that's all yeah. you see. And then you're like, oh yeah, I guess you're right. I doesn't mean I will be as successful, even if I get as big as him, because I won't 
have the same ratios, mm-hmm. the, the muscle bellies, like everything's different, right. you know? So yes, yes. I don't think a lot of people, um, know too much about like muscle insertions, um, that haven't been involved with the sport, like for years, like muscle insertions, like where, how long your, your muscle is, you know, just like the calf analogy, the short little high calves versus the long kinkly calves. And same thing for every body part, your glutes, your shoulders, your hamstrings, um, muscle insertions have a lot to play with it. And that can make a muscle look kind of round or pointy or more angular or more bulky. So there's a lot that goes into it. And I don't think a lot of people are um, very knowledgeable on that unless they're like really deep into this industry and they could see it and, and know about these things. But yeah, like the 16 year old me didn't know what a muscle insertion was like, what well, you know, yeah. I could look any way I want. No, you can't, you can shape the muscle to a certain extent, but you can't shape it. Like you can't reattach your, your muscle uh, belly insertion. So yeah, that's a weird one that I hear even sometimes now I don't hear, I will say I won't, I don't hear it from upper level judges, but I will right. hear it from like lower level judges. Like you just got to bring your lats down. Like they'll bring your lats down or I'm like, wait, change that's the a insertion. Good, yeah. That's oh. a good analogy. The lats, you can't. Yeah. yeah those, they are where they're at. Right. Some yeah. girls you'll see really, really high lats where it basically starts at their shoulder blade and then lower ones. Mine's lower. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. But uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. Too. Yeah. You'll but hear you can't the, lower. You can't lower. Them. Yeah. It's just, you get them bigger. You what know, if you, you get, there will be a surgery in years to come where you can lower that. Lower that. They're like, what if you did it? And they're like, oh, it's a little too low. It <laughs> <laughs> sucks so bad. The, yeah. So the muscle belly is going to be, you know, that's why you look at uh, Flex Wheeler and he was super, super round and bubbly. You know, some of these girls you'll see, they're very round and bubbly and some they'll get just as big, but they'll be dense and grainy. And you're like, oh, it doesn't look as pretty. Right. So mm-hmm. it's just different per person you just don't know until you get to that level right. of where you're going to be at so just the the look is going to be different in it are they going to like that look who knows you know it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a subjective thing absolutely so. absolutely so i always get i don't i don't want to say criticized but people will always assume that like because i say i don't i'm not going into the show expecting to when they think that i am like a pessimist right and as we already discussed earlier i'm a realist i'm a realist i'm not a pessimist but i will say this i i think like one of the reasons why I've been able to go as long as I have is because of that mindset of being realistic. And here's my reasoning. Okay. So let's say someone goes into a show expecting to win and they don't. It's like such a big disappointment and they might get discouraged and frustrated and eventually quit. Right. And let's say the person that was going into the show expecting to win won. it's like, okay, well, They won. It's what they expected. But if you go into a show without expectations and more like the mindset of like, hey, I'm confident that I brought my best and I did everything I possibly could to win. I, I, haze in the barn, what's done is done. I feel confident about my physique. Not saying I'm going to win, but I like the package I'm bringing. If you go with that mindset, but not have a necessarily a um, placing, a number placing in mind, I think it's so much better because it's like, first off, when I don't win, I don't get that like, oh my God, let down, like, oh, you know? Um, But when I do win, it's like, I've exceeded my expectations because I didn't have any. So it's like, that's why when I say like, you know, even when I win a, a show that's not like, quote, quote, a larger show, right? Even if it's a smaller show, which I hate using that yeah. descriptor because there is no such thing. Um, even when I win that, I'm surprised and it's like my first win. And that's like, it never gets old to me. I feel like if I went into every show expecting to win and I didn't, I would, again, get discouraged. But if I did win and I expected to win, I'd just get bored. Like, okay, yeah. it's another weekend. But it really does feel like, the first win every time I never get bored I never like I never assume I'm gonna win so it's like a new feeling all over again so times that by 37 you know that's still going so I think that's one of the reasons that kept me going is just having like just no expectations when it comes to placing but more so just feeling good with the progress I made and the package I bring to the stage what keeps you the thing that people don't understand about that too which is the only reason I like that about you, that this is the only reason I really like it about you, is that it keeps you training hard too. Yeah. Because that's where... I don't get too comfortable. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's where the... You'll see these like top athletes in the world. They will 
when they have their big blunders, it's because they got overly confident every time, mm. every time. The biggest and a good example, and I have, and that's why I have these gloves back here. I have, so I have back here in like my, th I'm a huge boxing fan, obviously, but Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson, I think I've talked about it once before. I have those gloves back here because it reminds me every single day, never get too confident. Never, never walk into things thinking that you're the best because the biggest upset in boxing history was Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas. No one gave Buster Douglas a chance. He was like a 40 to one underdog at the time, which means a 40 to one underdog means that if you were to bet a thousand dollars on Buster Douglas, he was, Vegas would have paid you 40,000 if you won for the 1,000. So 40 to one odds. It was that crazy, which means if you would have bet on Mike Tyson, if you would have, you bet a hundred dollars on him, you would have only gotten $4 in return because he was such a guaranteed favorite. Right. So, but even Mike Tyson, he got, he was so confident in this one. He even said out, he's like, I just didn't train for this guy. I was just so confident. I was just knocking everyone out in eight seconds. He was like, I just, there was no reason for me to have to put out that effort for, for this guy, you know, because I got overly confident. So it, it affects your training if you get too confident. And so that's a good thing. Um, that's a good thing that you, you never, I never have to worry about that. I never have to worry about you, the Mike Tyson versus, you're never going to be the Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas Ashley, right? Yeah. So, so um, you know, and after that he started training, started winning again, but it was, it was, uh, it was a, a humbling experience from him um, because he was just, you know, killing everyone at that point. So um, never get too confident. And I keep that there. And there's another thing I keep, which is I'll, I'll go into it one day, which is it's the Atari. Uh, it's an Atari video game. Mm -hmm the ET video game, which is a whole nother story on its own of a company being too comfortable, just putting out whatever they put out being purchased, you know? And so these are the two things I, I kind of keep as like a, a sentimental reminder to me in my office where I'm like, all right, never, never get too confident, never get too comfortable. You know, that's a, and that's something that you do. Yeah. You never, know. never, yeah. never, never. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, with that being said too, is like, do I get disappointed or discouraged anyway, even though I don't have an expectation. I do. And that's the honest truth. I get disappointed in myself when I make stupid mistakes. Now that gets to me. <laughs> and again, it doesn't really have anything to do with expectations, but I, I just, just putting it out there. I'm human too. And sometimes if I make really dumb mistakes, I will get so down on myself. Like I should know better. Why did I do that? So stupid of me. I'm an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just like, I eventually get over it. But like, again, it's just, you are always learning and, and mistakes are always going to happen. But when I make more than usual, I get like frustrated and that doesn't even have anything to do with my placing necessarily. Like some of my happiest times weren't were when I didn't win, but my physique looked awesome and I feel like I killed it in every area versus like sometimes even when I win, I will kind of be like, Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Oh yeah. my gosh. Like, so, you know, those will sit with you for a while. They do. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, but it is like a constant reminder. Okay. Can't do that again. Like be extra aware, be extra careful um, for the next time not to do this stupid mistake again or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. But it's good that you're, it's, it's good that you analyze too. And I think it's important oh, yes. for people to understand that when they're competing, you need to look at your pictures, look at your video. If you have any, uh, analyze your posing, analyze your everything and try to find, try to find the, the errors, you know, try to find errors to improve. And that's one of the reasons that you compete a lot too, is that, you know, when you're, when you're competing a lot, your flow is better, you know, that's oh, just, yeah. it is, you know, so, um, it's just something to, to, you know, maybe you're one of those people, you know, maybe you're one of those people that, that need to compete often to, to get your flow really confident and kind of build up to nationals. So if you're getting ready for a national show, maybe you do need to do two local shows and mm -hmm. get your feet wet and get more comfortable on there. Maybe you're not, maybe you're that girl who could do the Olympia once a year only and be just as fresh and just as confident and fluid on stage. To, to me, that's a little wild, but there are people out there like that. You see it. We see them all the time. Mm -hmm. People compete once, twice a year. And you're like, man, how are you still so fluid on stage and so confident? Like, but you know, some people are just like that. So just find out who you are and, and work with it on, on that too, because not everyone's going to be able to, to, I guess, confidence themselves into being confident on stage, mm -hmm. you know, to like can convince themselves. So, um, okay going into your next, uh, your next thing here. Sure. So when we're talking about expectations, I think a lot of that is also setting goals. So some, some notes about like goal setting and, um, kind of realizing where your expectations sit. Um, I, I have a few little bullet points that I would like to share. So determining expectations, when you determine when you determine your expectations early on, you'll know which direction you should go. It also sets the tone for your pace. Honestly, ask yourself, is this goal doable, probable, or are the odds against you? So that's another thing like that I do is again, overly like 
statistical when it comes to like probability. But I think before you even, you know, talk about expectations, just ask yourself, is this truly like a reasonable goal? Is this goal reasonable? Is this goal doable? Is the, are the odds against me? You know what I mean? Because you got to kind of have a little bit of self-awareness. Like, and how do you function? Are you one of those people that's like, tell me, do something, I'm going to do it. Or are you one of those people that's like, oh, well, you know, (laughs) some days I'm a little off, but so it's important to have like a, a very realistic conversation with yourself and be like, you know what? I'm not that kind of person. I think it's going to take me a little longer. So I think that's again, super important is to realize, is this, is this realistic? You know, ask, ask your coach, ask your friends. Maybe they have a good idea of what your personality is like, but it's something that you have to consider. Cause although, um, you know what quote I hate reach for the stars. And if you miss, you'll land on the moon. F that. That's so <laughs> stupid. It doesn't make any sense. So if your goals are too big, like I feel like you're not going to land on the moon. You're going to get disappointed if you don't meet them. <laughs> you never make it out of the atmosphere. Right. I hate <laughs> that quote so much. Um, so another thing is give yourself time and grace. You might not accomplish your goals in the planned time frame and just realize that's okay. Especially if we're talking about like shows, they happen all throughout the year. Okay. Now there are certain shows, of course, that you want to do if you signed up for it. And if it's the only opportunity, you know, maybe it's like the last national show of the year, of course. Right. But if it's just some local show, do one in a week or do one, I'm sorry, in a month, if you're not ready yet. Um, They're not going anywhere. So don't, don't try to put that much stress and pressure on yourself. If you're not, if you're cutting it close to begin with, you know what I mean? Um, so focus on what you've already accomplished. Think about things you've accomplished, helping you keep things in perspective. Again, just like reflecting on, you know what? I might not be where I need to be yet, but look how far I've come. Like, it's okay to give yourself a little pat on the back. You know, it's okay to be like, you know what? I'm not where I wanted to be, but look, look at how far I came. That's pretty incredible. I think it's, it's, it's motivating to see your own progress first and foremost, but I think it also like gives you a sense of like accomplishment in a, in a mini sense. So instead of thinking of meeting your one big, huge goal of maybe stepping on stage and winning this show and you're coming from being a transformation client, instead of having that as the major goal that you're trying to accomplish, think of it more as like little steps, like, okay, you're a transformation client. Oh, wow. I'm finally under 150 for the first time in 10 years. Okay. Wow. That's a goal. The next goal would to be this and the next one, this, and then the next goal is stepping on stage. And then the next goal is getting top five. And then the next one is winning. So I think it's much more useful to set small little goals that you can accomplish along the way, rather than just setting this really long-term big goal. And that's the only one you're like focusing on. Cause there's a lot uh, to be rewarded in between that meeting that huge goal, you know? And then another thing that I'm really big on is gratitude. Appreciate what you already have. Um, you know, again, going back to like looking about how far you've come, realize that, you know what, even, even if you didn't do as well to show, how cool is it that you did it? You got to compete, which 99.9% of people will never be able to do for whatever reason, or they don't have the willpower, but you did it. You stepped on stage. Maybe you didn't win. Maybe there's a lot to be improved, but you did it. And I think we're also forgetting the fact too, that your body's healthy enough to be able to do that. Do you know how many people wish they could, but they're not healthy enough in whatever way? Maybe they have some health condition. They can't do this, this kind of thing. Like that's pretty cool. And I think that's something that we always forget about because we were thinking about like such big goals and we forget about the little things that like, wow, that's already, that's already an amazing accomplishment in itself. Like being able to do it and being financially able to do it is, is like, it's a, something that some people don't have the pleasure of doing, you know? So you're healthy enough. You can afford it. Like, and you've already come such a long way. That's pretty cool in yeah. itself. Like, and it's super rare. You yeah. Know, people in our world, it's, you know, it can become so common. We're like, oh yeah, right. she competed, she competed. But you take our world out of it. Yes. And you go to like. Expand out. Your Zoom work, out. Your workplace, right? Mm-hmm. Where there's a hundred people in the office, whatever. 
and you're like, oh yeah, I did a show. Here's my pictures. Everyone's going to lose it for that. And they're going to be like, yeah. whoa, you did a bodybuilding show. And they don't That's care if you won crazy. first yeah. or 16th. They're impressed. And they'll be like, you look so good. Like them seeing an ab, they're going to be like, how did you do whoa, that? Could you ab. give me some advice? Like it's a different world, you know, that yeah. we live in versus everyone else. So, um, so yeah, it's something to be, it's, it's cool. You know, I love seeing it when it's like, um, I'll hear it sometimes it'll be like little kids and then they'll be like, my mom's a bodybuilder, <laughs> like look under like a posing or something or something like that. And it's just like, it's so cute. Cause they're, they think it's so, you know, to them, it's like, oh my God, my mom's a superwoman, you know, like what yeah. do they call wonder woman? Right. So yeah. it's a, it's a cool thing. And that's how the rest of the world kind of sees it too. Cause they didn't have the dedication to do it. It's really mm -hmm. tough. And I think that that with your going into your, you know, expectations and, and whatnot too, I think that that is important to talk about what are you willing to do to, to get there, right? Because a mm -hmm. lot of people don't, don't face that reality. Maybe you're not willing to get to that point of competing because it mm -hmm. takes so much, you know? It does. And you do have to be realistic about that too. I just wanted to touch on that because oh, yes. you, mentioned, you mentioned that too. It's, cause it's, it's tough, you know? You have to be willing to really put yourself through the ringer for some people, you know? If you're naturally lean, naturally muscular, you, you know, you're a blessed person and, and you know, you're not the norm. Uh, but most people are going to have to put yourself through the ringer a little bit to get ready for these stages. So you have to be real, you have to be able to answer that question. Like when it gets hard, am I going to be able to do this for the last month and mm -hmm. really grind it out? And, um, you know, a lot of people won't, you know, so it's, it's great that if you made it and be uh, value that you made it. And when you step off stage the very first time, it is a very good feeling. It's a, I and mean, there's a lot of stages that are like the best feeling, like your first time winning your first time, you know, you getting your pro card, you winning a pro shit, like all these winning. But the first time you step off stage, it's like you feel so accomplished. Right. You almost feel like you like graduated college or something. Yeah. <laughs> like you're like, I just walked down and got my degree. Like it's like it's like a feeling of, man, I did all that. It's been years. I grinded. I got this little glass trophy here, which means nothing. Right. But the the value is the 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 journey and you recognize it and you're like, man, I feel I feel great. You yeah. know? Yeah, that is such a great feeling. Like it's such a cool feeling to like surprise yourself. Like, wow, I did that. Yeah. I did that. Who, who would ever thought, you know? And I think you ask a lot of people on stage, like, could you picture yourself like 10 years ago doing what you're doing? Like, and they'll be like, no. So it's kind of cool that like they did all these things. But again, we are so in our industry and we mostly communicate with people in our industry. But if you look at it from a zoomed out perspective, such a, a cool feeling and yeah. you know it's you're you're very blessed person to even be able to compete so just think of it like that yeah it's quite the accomplishment you know it's quite the human accomplishment to go through something and it teaches you so many lessons you know of having a daily having a, a big goal and doing the actions every single day to get there and I always say that that's one of the reasons you see so many successful people that started with bodybuilding because it taught them a lesson growing up that, Hey, this is not going to be given to me. I have to work for it every single day. And you can apply that to everything in life. Mm -hmm. And I think I only, I, I still only think that the reason that I was successful in life was because of bodybuilding at such a young age, it instills it into you that you, there's not like you have to earn every single gram of muscle. Like there's nothing is going to be handed to you. You don't deserve anything only what you've put your work in for. That's the only thing you deserve and is going to be given to you. Like nothing will be handed to you. You don't mm -hmm. wake up, oh, I'm going to get my, you know, my three square meals in this a day. That's going to be handed to me. No, like you got to get that. So it's um, it's just a cool thing to like go through that process and be rewarded for your efforts. Um, even the minimal reward you get a day and then you just carry that for the rest of your life, you know? Absolutely. So. Yeah, I think like most people have the mindset of like, you know what? I did this six month prep. If I can do that, I can do anything, you know, it does give you that little like boost of confidence. Like, you know what? I'm capable of much more than what I realized because you, you always kind of, even people that don't compete anymore would compare it like, wow. I mean, I worked for 12 hours, but that's nothing compared to like, I did prep for six months and yeah. you know, got super lean and stuff. So it's like, you know, lots of lessons and, um, benefits from competing not just the trophies so what do you think you know i'm gonna throw a curveball at you okay. i'm gonna have to think about this one. what do you think the best lesson is from competing you've you've learned the best lesson it's a tough one mine mine just give you some time to think mine would be that you only get you, that you only nothing will be handed to you you only get what you earn mm. that's for me that's for sure that has to be it you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of metaphors in bodybuilding right you know? there's a lot of metaphors in bodybuilding but 
um, that one would be the, the one that's stuck with me the most for mm-hmm. sure. Like in terms of, yeah. I would say like for me, gratitude and, and the, like, so as, as you guys may or may not know, I took 2017 off, right. Cause I wanted to try to be like a normal person. Cause you know, it was what, what all the cool kids were doing. Right. Yeah. They always say you need balance and stuff. So I took 2017 off thinking like, okay, I want to try this normal person stuff. And I lived like a normal person for like a year, barely worked out. I could count on my hand how many actual workouts I did, ate whatever, snicker with sparse for breakfast, that kind of thing, put on 25 pounds. Um, But I was definitely a normal person, that's for sure. Um, And I realized that didn't make me happy at all. And it kind of just reminded me like, why do I want to be a normal person? Like, that's boring. I don't I don't want to be normal. I want to be spectacular. And that, you know, the gratitude I got from taking that year off, you'll never hear me, like, complain about, like, silly things like, oh, the show, the show. But it does, you know, gratitude is, is something that I think can help anyone with a lot of things. And just, again, with that zoomed out perspective and realizing what what you're accomplishing is is a privilege you know what you're you're going through is a privilege like you get the privilege of working with a coach or getting the privilege of getting to work out and being healthy enough but you know I think like a lot of times too is like I see it a lot with pros is like when they get too again confident or comfortable with winning um they're no longer grateful they're just greedy so sometimes gratitude can turn into greed whenever they don't like check themselves you know and then they expect things and they expect things to be handed and shows to go certain ways. So, you know, I think, yeah, if anything, it taught me like gratitude. I appreciate the sport and I shouldn't um, go out looking for what normal people would consider to be fun and just realizing like, I don't want to be that normal person. I want to be awesome. I want to be a freaking legend. So I can't be doing normal stuff. Like what's that? That's cool. That's good to hear from that perspective too. That makes more sense too. Why you're so the way you are Mm -hmm. now, you know, gracious on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And I think that teaches another lesson too is, is that there's going to be social pressures out there to be a certain way. And that might not always be the best for you, you know, Um, because I get them all the time too, you know? And so it's, uh, it's, it's cool to see that, you know, Mm -hmm. that, and, and also another thing is to take from that lesson that you just talked about is that you're never going to be, to be great, you're never going to be able to fall into the masses. You know, you're, that's the definition of being great mm-hmm. is being different than everyone else, right? And so, and, you know, many people would consider you great. I consider you great. I know you don't, but I do, you know, you're, you are the, the living, you are a living legend right now. You're the most winning competitor ever. And so, uh, most winning pro ever, who knows about the amateurs. <laughs> but um, the, so the, you know, that, that just shows you, you know, you can't fall into the the masses. You can't fall into the social pressures of being just normal. And you're going to have outside influences saying, you know, you're doing too much or you have a problem, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you're around a hundred people and they all saw the way you ate for a year, you know, 90 of them would probably be like, oh, well, she's too obsessed because just because from their perspective, this, cause they don't keep track of their stuff. You look like you're obsessed, right? Uh-huh. Like you look like it's a problem because to them, it's like they just food is just whatever. Yeah, they, it, to eat, so you know? they make it sound like you have a miserable life, yeah. like because you know they're able to eat that and you're not. Like, yeah, yeah. Just live so, a little. You know, I have that with. Like, oh. I'm like, I'm living just as much as oh, you are. Oh like, no, I'm, I'm living more. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like I always say this. It's like, so what? I don't go out on the weekends to eat pizza and beer. You know, what I do get to do. I get to travel the world and compete and do seminars, and I would never be able to do that. If I was sitting around eating pizza and beer like a normal person, yeah. like, I'm sorry, I think my life's pretty dang exciting in comparison. So I'll throw away my weekends, like, and I'd rather just train and, and eat. I'm very, I'm very satisfied with my food. So it's not like I'm missing out on that. I just, yeah. you know, there was this, there very was, content. There was this funny, um, it's not how you act, but it's really funny. It was a, it was after a fight and this guy was getting interviewed and he won the fight, but no one agreed that he won the fight. And so everyone was booing him in the audience. It was like, you know, 20,000 people are booing this guy who just won. And he goes, um, he goes, 
you guys booing, you just, he's like, you guys booing, shut up, eat your pizza and popcorn. You let the athletes do their job. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that was so funny. That's and savage. Everyone, yeah, was I love sad, it. But he's right. He's right, right? Because yeah. he's not there doing that. You know, you're mm-hmm. watching, he's doing, you know? So uh, it's, it's, it's those are the people that are the ones that are going to have the loudest voices are the ones that are watching while you're doing. And so, you know, just mm-hmm. smile and nod. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, t- I gave the normal person stuff a go. Not for me. Yeah. I don't want to be normal. Um, I'll, I'll take my life any day. So pretty content with it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's your, your, uh, what is it called? Many will come, few will be chosen. I think that you're one of the chosen. So oh, thank yeah, you, you know? yeah, we're, we're throwing quotes out, we're throwing quotes. That's a Bible one. Quotes. That's a, that's a Bible one. So <laughs> yeah, the, um, that's the same thing with me too. I feel like that's the same for me. I think that's why we, we vibe good to the others too, is that I, you know, I don't, I don't ever, I've tried to even take a few days off of this and I, I can't, you know, which I probably should, but like three days is too much for me. I just love it. You know? And it's just, mm-hmm. that's a cool thing. You know, if you find your passion and this is your passion guys, like do take it to the max that you can, it doesn't matter what your passion is. It could be, it could be anything, you know, but never give up. Right. Um, you know, going back into those, going back into those, um, stories that you're talking about, you know, giving up and, and, and never giving up and teaching you to keep going. There is this, uh, I'll end it with the story. There is this guy who was really obsessed and just loved his passion was the soda business for some reason, right? He liked the soda business and he started a soda company. It was called uh, three up. And so he did this soda company. It went out of business. He started it again. He's like, so passionate. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. He went to four up, right? Next company came up five up, went out of business. Next company, six up and he quit six up, right? Sold the rights, everything sold the model seven up. Next guy who got it. Next guy who did it. He quit. Next guy who got it, 7-Up was created. We all know what 7-Up is now, right? So same thing with WD-40, right? They started off, WD was like, W. it was WD like 30, or no, 1. It was what it started. It was 1. That's right, WD-1. So each formula. What is that? WD-40? What is that? It's a it's a oil based spray. It's oh, in it's like you've our seen bikini it. audience would no, know. No, no, that. you guys don't you know, okay, so WD forty, it's blue. You've seen it. It's blue with a yellow label and it says WD forty and it's got like a red top and you spray it for like your door hinges and all these things. <laughs> okay, I guess I thought it was coming. Did you know what it is, Melina? I'm like? to knows what it is. Okay. Do I look like a girl that would be fixing cars no, and doing that? I don't no, it might. You know. You call me, get my hands all dirty. Call me up if you need something oil. Yeah, I got you. I, I got you. I, I, I actually would. See, this is part of <laughs> I like. I actually helped her with that. Yes. Stuff. <laughs> this is not something I would know. No. So, so WD started off WD one. There's a, there's a story of this guy who's in a, um, in a dorm room with this guy and his door was squeaky, but his roommate was, uh, his roommate was the son of the owner of WD 40, but he was on WD, like just WD, I guess probably. And he was like, Oh, me and my dad have been working on this formula. I got this and that'll work. So we went around and sprayed all the doors and it worked out. This stuff is great. But he was like, what is it called? He's like, Oh, WD, whatever number he was at, but it took 40 times for them to get it right. So that's what WD 40 is. And if you see it, you'll, if you, you'll, you probably have a can of it at your house, but it's like the most popular, like (laughs) oil based, like spray lubricant that there is. And it's like this huge company. So um, yeah, we're talking, well, about, how did something. we get to spray lubricants today and set it up? I learned something <laughs> new today. I'm so um, off topic. <laughs> as you tend to be. I tend to be, tend, right? It's like, you tend to drift what do I, what do I go into today? Wait, it's a seven up Mike Tyson, uh, oil-based lubricants, <laughs> right? So look, based lubricants, I don't know. And hey, there's one more Atari video games. Was, mm. Oh man, I gotta stay on topic. All right. <laughs> N- NPC from now on, IPV NPC. All right. Well, I guess with that guys. I don't even know what podcast you're listening to at this point, but (laughs) the kitty of the brain, we're out. Thank you guys.